Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another video of this series where we respond to J. Smith lies and ignorant claims about the Quran. Today we will deal with another claim that J. Smith made. J. claimed that the ten readings started to appear in the mid 8th century up until the 10th century. Let's give J. Smith a chance to make his claim. Well, this one was written in 736. Muhammad died in 632, right? Supposedly, so this is over 100 years later. And this yeah. is the earliest. This is the first one to be written. This is the very first one to be written. Then you have here, Ibn Kathir, 738, two years later. al Qasai, 805. Khala, 844. Khalun, 835. Watch. So now you're into the 9th century. These Qurans start to get written in 736 in the 8th century, and they continue to be written right through the 8th century up until the 9th century. Finally, by the 10th century, 936, a guy named Ibn Mujahid realizes there's a problem. There's just too many Qurans. So he chooses seven. These are the seven. All right, go from 736 all the way up to 905. 736. Pay attention to the dates. Look at the dates. You know, he names these seven. All of them, all of them are from the 8th and 9th century. Not one of them is from the 7th century. Who are these are the seven who are from the 8th century. None of them are from the 7th century. They all begin to appear about 100 years after Muhammad. Every one of these is from somebody in the 8th and 9th century. And the first one is this guy right here, Ibn Amir. This is the first of those to be written in a dialectical form that is different. And he is from Damascus. And his date is 736. This is the next century. This is right well into the next century. And all these other ones, the 30 that, we've, that are made official, they go all the way up until 912. The 10th century, so from the 8th century up until the 10th century. And those are known as the seven holy Qurans. But they don't even get written down until 736, and they go continue all the way up until 805. So that's the, that's the 9th century. Anyone listening to this guy and listening to the dates and how far these readers were from Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will be extremely shocked. He exposed the holes in the narrative. This guy is a genius. He completely destroyed the Quran, right? Well, no. As usual, a closer investigation of this claim will prove how ridiculous it is. So what are these dates this guy is talking about? Let's take a look at this table. Here we have the dates that J. Smith was talking about. And as you can see, according to this table, these readers are too far from the time the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, lived. The earliest one is Ibn Amr, 104 years after Prophet Muhammad وسلم. That's a very long time. Jay definitely has a point here. However, if you pay attention to the dates mentioned in this table, these are nothing but the dates of the death of the readers. So Jay kind of assumed that all of these readers started to read the Quran only in the very last year of their lives. This is how ridiculous the claim is. For example, let's take Ibn Amr. Ibn Amr died in 736. That's over 100 years after Prophet Muhammad وسلم. But the problem is, Ibn Amr died at the age of 95. So to go to the date of his death is to assume that he spent 94 years doing nothing until the last year of his life when he decided to read the Quran. Now, let me show you with a real example how stupid this can be. In this table, we have a list of companions of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. They are Anas ibn Malik, the servant of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Abbas, his cousin, Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of his closest companion, Umar ibn Khattab, Aisha ibn Abi Bakr, his wife, and Asma bin to Abi Bakr, the daughter of Abu Bakr and Aisha's older sister. If we apply J. Smith's hilarious standard, then none of these people actually met Prophet Muhammad. Their time is too far from the Prophet's life. I mean, Anas ibn Malik died in 709. That's almost 80 years after Prophet Muhammad وسلم. So Anas ibn Malik never met Prophet Muhammad. Prophet died in 632. Abdullah ibn Abbas died in 687. The Prophet died in 632. Abdullah ibn Umar died in 693. Aisha died in 678. So maybe she didn't meet Prophet Muhammad Then her older sister, Asma, died in 692. That's a good 60 years after Prophet Muhammad And also, think about it. If you take 
the date they die, then it seems like Aisha is earlier than Asma. But in reality, Asma is older than Aisha. So not just the claim is deceptive, it is even, you know, very stupid. And let's play the same game. If you are going to go for the date of death, let's go to the date of birth. We will show you how close these readers were to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu time. Here we have Ibn Amr, he was born in 641. That's just nine years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu death. Ibn Kathir was born in 665, 33 years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu death. Asim was probably born in 675, that's just 43 years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu death. Abu Amr was born 57 years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu death. Hamza 67 years, Nafi 57 years. So in less than 80 years of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu death, seven out of the ten readers were born. The earliest one is Ibn Amr. He was born nine years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi death. So take a look at these two tables. Check how deceptive this guy is. Clearly he's trying to push the readers away from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu time by going to the date of their death. And I know that even going to the date of birth is not reasonable, but I'm just playing his game. So let me be a little more realistic here. I will take the date they become seven years old because we have children start to learn the Quran at the age of five, at the age of six, at the age of seven. So let's say at worst, these people started to learn the Quran when they were seven years old. Let's begin. Ibn Amr became seven years old in 648. That's just 16 years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi death. Abu Ja'far became seven years old in 662. That's just 27 years after the Prophet's death. Ibn Kathir, 672, 40 years after Prophet's death. Asim, 682, 50 years after the Prophet's death. Nafi, he became 7 years old, 64 years after the Prophet's death. Abu Amr, again 64 years after the Prophet's death. Hamza, 74 years after the Prophet's death. In less than 100 years after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu death, 7 out of the 10 readers reached the age 7. So even in a realistic scenario, these readers were not too far from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu time. They started to learn the Qur'an from 16 to 74 years after the Prophet's death. So, we've refuted Jay, right? Is that the end of the video? Well, no. Let me completely bury his stupid claim. Jay is trying to fool his gullible followers. These readers must be close to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And if they are not close to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu then he exposed the holes in the narrative and he won the argument, right? Wrong! First of all, we have just shown that the readers are not far from Prophet Muhammad But it's not just Prophet Muhammad that we have to check how close the readers were to him. There are other figures who are relevant here. Uthman ibn Affan, the man who compiled the Uthmanic Mus'haf that we are reading today. We should also see how close the readers to the time of Uthman. Ali ibn Abi Talib, the fourth and last guided caliph and the cousin of Prophet Muhammad and one of the main reciters of Quran among the Sahaba. Also, we have the four members of the committee that Uthman assigned to write the Quran. These are Zayd ibn Thabit, Sa'd ibn al-As, Abdullah ibn Zubair and Al-Harith ibn Hisham. It is very important to see how far the readers are from these figures because after Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, these were the main figures who were responsible for the compilation of the Qur'an. Don't try to fool us Mr. Smith and pretend that we only have to check how close the readers to Prophet Muhammad and we ignore all of these names. Sorry, it doesn't work. So let's now again once more expose your lies and stupidity. When Uthman died in 656, Two out of the ten readers were already born. Abu Jafar was one year old and Ibn Amr was 15 years old. The rest of the readers were not far from Uthman's death. 
As you can see, they were born 9 years after Uthman's death, 19, 32 years, 33 years, 43 years, 79 years, 81 years. So within 100 years from Uthman's death, 9 readers were born. Let's now go to Ali ibn Abi Talib who died in 661. By that date, Ibn Amr was already 20 years old. Abu Jafar was 6 years old. Ibn Kathir wasn't yet born. He was born four years after Ali's death. And the rest are not far from Ali's time. Asim 14 years, Nafi' and Abu Amr 28 years, Hamza 38 years. Of course, this is the date of the birth. But overall, it's very clear that they are close to the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Let's now go to the committee that Uthman said, the main guy, Zayd ibn Thabit Zayd ibn Thabit died in 665. By that time, Ibn Amr was already 24 years old, Abu Jafar was 10 years old, Ibn Kathir was born, he was just one year old. And the rest of the readers are again not very far from Zayd. Now we will go to the second man in the committee, Said ibn al-As, who died in 672. By that time, Ibn Amr was 31 years old. Abu Jafar was 17 years old, Ibn Kathir was 7 years old, and you can check the rest of the readers. Then we go to Abdullah ibn Zubair who died in 692. Ibn Amr was 51 years old when Ibn Zubair died. Abu Jafar was 37 years old. Ibn Kathir 27 years old. Asim was born, he was 17 years old when Ibn Zubair died. Nafi' was 3 years old, Abu Amr was 3 years old. So by the time Abdullah ibn Zubair was died or killed, he was killed by Al-Hajjaj, 6 out of the 10 readers were already born, not just born, I mean 4 out of them were already men, from 17 years old to 51 years old. Now we go to the last one of the 4 people Uthman assigned to compile the Mus'haf. His name is Al-Harith ibn Hisham. He died in 712. When Al-Harith ibn Hisham died, 7 out of the 10 were already born. And not just born, I mean some of them were even teaching. Ibn Amr was 71 years old. Abu Jafar 57 years old. Ibn Kathir 47 years old. Asim 37 years old. Nafi 23 years old. Abu Amr 23 years old. Hamza, 13 years old, and the other three were just within like 55 years from Al-Harith ibn Hisham's death. So this table destroyed any notion, any claim that the 10 readers were so disconnected from the time of the compilation of the Uthmanic Mus'haf. Another important group of people that we have to focus on are the reciters that Uthman sent to the regions. Remember, the narrative says that when Uthman compiled the Mus'haf, he sent a copy to each region with a reciter to teach people how to recite the Qur'an. So it is important to check how close were these reciters that Uthman sent to the ten readers. So let's begin with the first one, the reciter Uthman sent to Sham. His name is al mughira bin Abi Shihab. He died in 709. In 709, Ibn Amr was already 68 years old. And surprise, surprise, actually, Al Mughira ibn Abi Shihab was Ibn Amr's direct teacher. Ibn Amr learned the Quran from Uthman's direct reciter that he sent to Sham. The next one in Medina was Zayd ibn Thabit, who died in 665. Abu Jafar, who is from Medina, was 10 years old when Zayd ibn Thabit died. In Mecca, Uthman sent Abdullah ibn Sayyib. He died in 690. In 690, Ibn Kathir was 25 years old. And to Basra, Uthman sent Amr bin Abdullah bin Qais, who died in 680. He died 9 years before Abu Amr al-Basri was born. And last of all, in Kufa, Uthman sent Abu Abdurrahman al sulami who died in 693. By that time, Asim, Haf's teacher, was almost 18 years old. 
And not just that, Abu Abdurrahman al Salami was Asim's direct teacher. Asim learned the Quran from the reciter Uthman sent to Kufa. So, games up, guys. I mean, all of them are close to the time of the main reciters Uthman sent to the regions. Asim and Ibn Amr were direct students of two of the teachers Uthman sent. What else do you want to debate, Mr. Smith? And the last nail in J. Smith's coffin is this. How close were the readers to the companions of Prophet Muhammad in their regions? The last companion of Prophet Muhammad who died in Medina was Asaib ibn Yazid who died in 713. By that date, Abu Jafar was already 58 years old. The last companion who died in Mecca is Abu Tufail, who died in 718. Ibn Kathir was 53 years old when Abu Tufail died in Mecca. The last companion who died in Kufa is Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa, who died in 708. Asim was already 33 years old when Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa died. And the last companion who died in Basra Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anh, who died in 709. Abu Amr al-Basri was 20 years old when Anas ibn Malik died. And last of all, in Sham, Abdullah ibn Basr died in 710. Ibn Amr was 69 years old when the last companions of Prophet Muhammad sallam, died in Sham. The point I'm trying to make is this. The companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, were still alive when five of the ten readers were teaching their Qiraat. So let's now wrap up what we have been discussing in this video. The ten readers were not so far from Prophet Muhammad وسلم's time. The ten readers were very close to the time of the people who compiled the Mus'haf. Some of them were even living and teaching when those people were alive. The ten readers were very close to the time of the reciters that Uthman sent to the region. Some of them were even direct students of those teachers. And the ten readers were very close to the time of the companions of Prophet Muhammad But J. Smith wants us to ignore all of this and just focus on two factors. The date Prophet Muhammad died and the date those readers died in order to push them away from the time of Prophet Muhammad And this is the definition of deception, disingenuousness and stupidity. It also shows how low Jay views his followers. He views them as some group of morons who would eat up any lies that he throws around and we are there to show you what kind of a liar he is. In next video, inshallah, I will show you what happened when I confronted Jay with this information. Here is, here is Osama, by the way. He's saying Abu Jafar, Ibn Amir, Asim, Ibn Kathir all lived in the 7th century. From folks, put him in timeout, please, because he needs to go and do his research. Let's just go through it. He doesn't even know what 7th century is, actually. Okay, they may. You see, they don't do their homework. Uh, your head is in the sand. Use a shovel. Get your head out. Use your brain. It works. Uh, come to these shows intentionally just to distract you. They come up with fo uh, you know claims like this. Uh, oh, they're all in the 7th century. Uh, they were kind moderators. Of moderators, please block this, uh, this person right away. Thank you. Go ahead. You know, I'm, I'm going to get back to my uh, moderators. Uh, moderators, it's Osama. O S A M A Yamani. That's the person we're talking about.